I did not ask him to do anything. I'm simply saying his word, speaking it into my life, and he brings it to pass. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today, and you walk with him by saying words. My name is Andrew Hemstraw. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe. If this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you, then consider becoming a partner with us. God's system is still functioning, and it's an unfailing system. It doesn't fail. There are other systems, worldly systems, that do fail. In fact, almost every worldly system fails. I hope you can hear that. But God's Word and His system never fails. So even though all the other systems in the world may fail and falter, God's Word stands sure and firm. And so if we're standing on God's Word and we're working God's Word, we don't fail, we don't falter, we stand firm. We are told to trust not in uncertain riches or trust not in uncertain systems he'd be talking about worldly systems and we're not supposed to trust in those we're supposed to trust in the living god and his system is certain let's read this first timothy chapter 6 verse 17 charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches now the uncertain riches would of necessity have to include and we're talking about worldly riches the economy that those riches exist in the political system that those riches exist in because all of those things propping it up are uncertain trust not in uncertain riches but the opposite of that you got the uncertain riches the opposite of that is trust in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy when you trust in the living God's system your riches are certain your economy is certain your system is certain it's another word for certain is sure it's sure it doesn't falter it doesn't fail it comes through and it works every time regardless of the other system that you may be in or may be trying to affect you it supersedes it it goes beyond it and it makes you certain and sure charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy that's certain and that certainty is not dependent on it couldn't be it couldn't be certain if it was dependent on the other worldly system say my riches are not dependent on the worldly system are you here so let's go on in this and be great in the kingdom of God I'm gonna be talking about that tonight how you can be great in the kingdom of God not just someone who barely gets by but someone who is great and we see this over and over and over and over again in the Bible Genesis chapter 26 verse 1 and there was a famine in the land now you know what that means right there was no water and so that made it problematic if you had animals or were gonna grow some crops kind of need some water and the Lord appeared unto him and said go not down into Egypt because that's where everybody was going go not down into Egypt but dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of sojourn in this land and I will be with thee and will bless thee and I will perform the oath or the word that I swear unto Abraham thy father 
you see what's going on here Isaac was told not to go where everybody else was going but God told him to sow in that land even though it was a land of famine it's one thing you don't do that famine there could have been the would have been the economy of the day look down at verse 12 then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold and the Lord blessed him so, and it goes on to say that Isaac increased and increased until he became one of the wealthiest men in that land God blessed him and it superseded here's my point it superseded the famine and the economy and the system of the day the system of the day was to go down to Egypt and wait for a rain to show up so God said he'd bless him and he blessed him which meant he increased him when everybody else was not increasing everybody else was decreasing everybody else in fact went under so with the blessing of God you go over regardless if everyone else goes under my question do you want to be comfortable because you're doing what fits in with everybody else and it fits in with your present religious thinking that's more comfortable to just keep doing what you've been doing and what everybody else is doing it's more comfortable well you want to be comfortable in that or would you rather be uncomfortable but with results because it's uncomfortable to do something that somebody else isn't doing it's uncomfortable to do something that you haven't been doing or to do it in a way that doesn't seem nearly as religious as it ought to be I'm going to encourage you to be uncomfortable but you'll have certain results you'll have sure results instead of just you might have maybe some results maybe but I doubt it it's not where everyone else is but that's where you need to go to be great and I'm telling you that's where we're going Matthew chapter 8 verse 5 and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying Lord my servant lies at home sick of a palsy grievously tormented and Jesus said unto him I will come and heal him the centurion answered and said Lord I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed verse 10 Jesus says verily I say unto you I have not found so great faith no not in Israel so here we see the greatest faith that you can have is speaking the word only and my something are you here because he said that Jesus said this is the greatest faith I've not found so great faith but here the centurion was saying speak the word only and my servant shall be healed now you can put in there whatever situation you need fixed speak the word only and my finances shall be increased speak the word only and my youth shall be renewed so we can see here that it's in speaking the word where the greatest faith exists his faith was in the word spoken to do the job because he said you don't have to go you just have to speak the word so he had faith that the word spoken would do the job say that faith that the word spoken would do the job and I realize this is going to be uncomfortable for a lot of people stop asking 
to be healed start calling yourself healed according to the word first Peter 2 24 by Jesus stripes I was healed start calling yourself healed according to the word stop praying about it stop asking God to heal you and start calling yourself healed according to the word stop asking for your youth to be renewed and start calling your youth renewed according to the word it's not what everybody's doing you'll be uncomfortable at first stop praying for more money stop it start calling your bank account full with abundance according to the word the blessing of the Lord makes me rich adds no sorrow with it call the money speak to the money money cometh to me now stop praying about it how many people are sitting there begging God to do something he's already done you start calling it the way the word says it that's how you get great faith that's what great faith is yeah I'm uncomfortable with that uh, I'm uncomfortable with that I I feel like I must ask God to do something that he's already said he would do why do you have to ask God to do something that he's already said he he would do or has already done by Jesus stripes you were healed you're just not calling yourself the way God has already called you you are blessed well the blessing of the Lord makes you rich if you feel like you have to continually ask God to do something for you that he's already said that he either did or would do that's not faith that is not pleasing unto God the greatest faith speaks the word only so according to the word Proverbs 10 22 the blessing of the Lord makes rich adds no sorrow with it so I say the blessing of the Lord makes me rich and adds no sorrow with it the blessing of the Lord makes me rich and adds no sorrow with it when I say the word of the Lord I'm saying what he said about me I'm literally prophesying my future oh you're not prophesying really I'm saying the word of the Lord something that might not be looks like it is right now I might not feel blessed I might not look blessed I might not look or feel rich but I'm saying are you here I'm saying what God said I'm saying what God said is the word of the Lord I'm prophesying my future by decreeing the word of the Lord some of you got that in my experience when I say Philippians 419 my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus I say my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus when I say Philippians 419 my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus I experience in my life my God supplying all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus I prophesied it and it came to pass so when Philippians 419 is in my mouth I'm pleasing God I'm speaking the word only I did not ask him to do anything I'm simply saying his word speaking it into my life and he brings it to pass so that's my experience when I speak Philippians 419 my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus I have that in my mouth then Philippians 419 gets into my life that's my experience I'm telling you this works better than prayer this works lots of prayers don't work in fact
fact if you're begging God to do something he's already said he has either done or will do then you're just wasting your time you're out of order I know this isn't comfortable but it's available this isn't comfortable in the way a lot of people think but this is where we're supposed to be and it makes the power of God available it makes those scriptures available to you this works better than prayer Luke chapter 5 let's look at verse 17 and it came to pass on a certain day as he Jesus was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them so Jesus was teaching say Jesus was teaching now what does that mean was he teaching silently with little plush animals or was he teaching by speaking say Jesus was teaching by speaking and the power of the Lord was present another way to say that the power of the Lord was available so through Jesus speaking the word right through Jesus speaking the word and teaching the word the power of the Lord became available the power of the Lord became present I hope I can get you here Jesus speaking the word and through speaking the word the power became present there at a certain place became available there at the certain place which implies it wasn't the other place so the power was made available to heal it would also apply to prosper remember Jesus said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor to heal the sick so I mean all of these things that power became available that's my point it becomes available wasn't available became available not available available two different things right listen while saying Proverbs 10 22 the blessing of the Lord makes me rich and adds no sorrow with it what happens through me saying the word but the power becomes available the power is present to make rich and add no sorrow the power becomes available to make rich and add no sorrow through the speaking of the word a little side note here blessing actually means empowered to prosper when God blesses you he's empowering you to prosper he's giving you power say he's giving me power whose power but when it says Jesus was teaching and the power of the Lord was present whose power who was the Lord we were talking about couldn't have been Jesus because he was there if it was just Jesus and his power it would have already been there he wouldn't have said the power of the Lord is present so it wasn't Jesus it was the Spirit Lord or the Spirit of the Lord it was the Spirit Lord that Jesus talked about in Luke 4 17 we were in Luke 5 17 so go back a chapter and go to Luke 4 17 there was delivered unto him the book so Jesus is about ready to read out of Isaiah which is a scripture he was just going to say a verse of scripture and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach who was on Jesus the Spirit of the Lord or of us not even in the Greek it just says the Spirit Lord is upon him because he the Spirit Lord has anointed me to say words 
to preach what to preach these words to speak or teach these words and when he did that the power of the Spirit Lord was present to do the word that he said does this make sense how am I gonna get the Spirit Lord to do the words he said I have to say them when I say them the power that's in those words becomes available to me if I don't say them they never become available to me I can pray for them I continually pray and pray and pray and the power of the Lord is never made available or present to do the thing I wanted it to do but if I say them this works better than prayer because this works so in Luke 4 17 it says the Spirit Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach now some would criticize me and my wholehearted devotion and worship to the Holy Ghost as being fanatical they don't know what they're talking about they don't know him as God at some point you will come to know hopefully that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and he's the one you're walking with I have come to know the Holy Ghost as the Lord my God the one who's with me in the earth well none of my messages are just for everyone the messages I say are for those who have ears to hear let them hear what the Spirit saith to the churches and if you'll do this says the Spirit of the Lord you shall not only be great now and overcome all the obstacles that are put in front of you but you shall have greatness in the kingdom of heaven who's able to make you that way the Lord your God the Holy Ghost and him only shall you serve are you getting this and the Holy Ghost is well pleased the Holy Ghost is God he's in the earth today how do we walk with him by speaking and saying in agreement with his word it's how we become great this is the prayer of the Holy Ghost worshiper they are a sayer they begin saying and when I begin saying that's my praying say my saying is my praying why because I'm in the earth he's in the earth this is how I walk with him this is the prayer of the Holy Ghost worshiper get comfortable with that I'm not comfortable with it that's because you've been doing something completely different for way too long and that didn't work this works it makes his power available his power present for you say it makes his power present for me stop asking to be healed and start calling yourself healed according to the word you will have power made available to you and it will work he the Holy Ghost has already spoken that by Jesus stripes you were healed that needs to be in your mouth by Jesus stripes I was healed and as you continue to say by Jesus stripes I was healed power is made present and available to heal you stop asking and praying about money and start calling it in speak to it call it talk to it it will obey your voice as you give voice to God's Word concerning prosperity some people are hearing this the power of the Lord will be made present and available to you to heal you to deliver you and to prosper you Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it when I begin to confess this verse of Scripture 
when I get begin to put this verse of Scripture on my lips what begins to happen the blessing of the Lord and the power thereof is made available to you it's made present to you present in your present circumstance and situation to make you rich and add no sorrow with it this blessing is on me and you'll say the same thing when you begin to confess this on a regular basis this blessing is literally on me the blessing to be made rich and have no sorrow added and those who join up with this ministry that exact same blessing comes on them the blessing makes them rich and adds no sorrow with it Holy Ghost I thank you for these people that they've heard this word and their lives are being changed and as they go forth by speaking in agreement with your words we can see those things begin to manifest begin to take place and we shall be great in the kingdom of God and nothing shall be able to stop us or thwart us in Jesus name amen if you have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand and say this after me the blessing of the Lord is on me it makes me rich and adds no sorrow with it that power is present in my life that power is available for me right now and I'm walking in it I thank you Holy Ghost for it that I am blessed I am made rich and there's no sorrow added unto me the Father is in heaven Jesus at his right hand Holy Ghost your God in the earth to